Hey, Loyal Joe and Joe listeners, a quick note about today's show. Now, most of you know that we do the show in chronological order from the air date. So that means today's episode should be The Captives of Cobra Part 1. However, it's not going to be that. It's going to be Bazooka Saw Sea Serpent because today, on Wednesday, November 16th, the day that you're listening to this for the first time, we are actually recording our very first live episode. And we're doing the two-parter, Captives of Cobra, with IDW G.I. Joe author Aubrey Sitterson. So if you're listening to this on the morning of Wednesday, November 16th, and you're free tonight, come on down to Melrose and La Brea in Los Angeles for the live taping. Otherwise, next week we'll be back with our regularly scheduled program of Captives of Cobra. So now, enjoy this special episode of Bazooka Saw Sea Serpent. You are listening to the Joe on Joe podcast, the only podcast where Joe talks about Joe. And now, your host, Joe Slepsky. Hey, and welcome back to Joe on Joe. I'm your host, Joe Slepsky. And with me this week is a friend of mine from California. He is a TV and video producer. He is a very talented, uh, all-around jack-of-all-trades. I've seen him do many things very well. (laughs) <laughs> and he is also a huge Transformers expert, which I, I want to talk about. His name is Matt Kyle. Matt, welcome to Joe on Joe. Well, thank you. It's good to be here. Now, you previously joined us on an episode for The Viper is the Coming. Viper. And uh, you were in my camp where we love it. Yes. Yes. That's, that's one of the two episodes I... I like the five-part epic sagas, but like in terms of the standalone episodes, I remember that one. And I remember the one where Shipwreck tells the story about Ship Shape and all the, uh-huh. the little Joes. Well, today's episode we're going to be watching is called Bazooka Saw a Sea Serpent, which has a lot of room for fun in it. This one rings a bell, but I don't know any Picture I can't remember specifics. The G.I. Joes go on the hunt for the Loch Ness Monster. Because that's, that's a good use of government money. <laughs> Absolutely. That's what we're going to be dealing with today. So, Matt, you have a history uh, in TV and film, TV and video production, uh, circling the video game world. You worked on G4 and X-Play. Yeah. For 12 years? 12 years. I mean, I was at Tech TV before G4 bought mm-hmm. them and merged us, and we, we ended up in L.A. or San Francisco at Tech TV for X-Play and Extended Play. So, yeah, I did video game TV for uh, 12 years, a little over a little over 12 years, um, which is uh, pretty good work if you can get it. Yeah. Um, and uh, they shut that down, and I still, you know, I still do uh, game-related TV production. I did some stuff for, for uh, Fusion. Last year we did a Star Wars special for the Star Wars games coming out that that fall last fall, which was um, Star that was well, I was working uh, Battlefront and this Old Republic expansion oh, yeah. and Disney Infinity 3.0, uh, which was that was that was a job we worked. We pour, were, pour one out for Disney Infinity. Yeah, yeah, that was a, that was a good that was a good it was a, game. It was a good it was a good fun game. And a whole uh, lot of people lost their jobs when that yeah, game got it, shut down. It's really sad. I think the most plausible reason I would write about it, if you're not familiar, it's a, it's, a, it's one of the toyetic video game lines. So yeah, you have, buy a little buy a little toy figure like Skylanders. Yeah, is is the big one, and Skylanders also Skylanders pioneered the idea. Yeah, you know. and uh, for Nintendo, they have the Amiibos. Yeah, um, Goldmine uh, for Nintendo. Goldmine for Nintendo. Uh, what we had heard, I saw someone wrote did some extensive writing about it, and uh, it, it all came down to mismanagement of the production of those toys. Mm-hmm. They miscalculated how many were needed, and they it, it overspent on the toy part instead of on the actual. You know, had had they had a better reign on that, then yeah, it, it would have been more successful. They had the opposite problem of the Amiibo uh, platform, which was they choked the market with too yeah. much product. And uh, I mean, it's mostly gone now. That because I remember a few weeks ago, a couple months ago, like they were clearing them out. It was buy one get two free. Yeah, which was like I've never even seen that kind of a sale before. So, so yeah, there was a lot of unmoving product uh, in the Infinity line, and it's too bad. I mean. Those good people making those games, they're they're putting some effort into making them a good video game on top of being a goldmine money seller. A hundred percent. And the figures themselves were gorgeous. They, yeah. they they had a whole at uh it was it was maybe it was San Diego, I think I saw at one of the cons out here, they had a whole booth set up to well actually probably E three. It was just the art of designing mm-hmm. the the Star Wars amiibo or amiibos. The Star Wars uh what do they call them? The figures. Figures? The in- Infinities, infinity figures. Yeah, I guess. yeah, and it was just the artwork for it was so beautiful. They yeah. were so it just stylized and fun and instantly recognized. Yeah, it was great. So yeah, we did a lot of that. It, uh, that was a fun job, because, uh, interesting job because we were working for Fusion, but we were also working for Disney and Lucasfilm and Lucas Games, 
and Disney Parks because we shot at Disneyland. Yeah, I, that was there were a lot of meetings. That was that was a very complicated shoot. Just <laughs> a lot of you lot of had a lot of corporate over, a lot of corporate overlords to please. Yeah, yeah. But uh, so these days you're working uh, with Sifted.net. Is that correct? Yes. S i f t d. There's no e. Yes. Dot net. Like Tumblr. Like Tumblr. Um, and explain. Let's talk a little bit. What what is that again? Sifted.net is a it's a, a, a website started by my friend Shane Satterfield who uh, who worked at uh, Game Trailer. He's editor in chief at Game Trailers for a very long time. He was on the show Invisible Walls that a lot of people remember. Remember. He started his own site called Sifted, and what it is is basically it's a it's kind of a content aggregator sort of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, but you go you start you, ha- you start an account and you put in your preferences for what you're interested in in gaming, and uh, it sifts through every single video game article on the internet, mm. and every day it basically spits out your feed, your sift, which is a uh, uh, customized list of news articles that it thinks you'd be interested to see. And uh, it basically sa- it saves you a lot of time combing through sites for various news things and limits it to what you're interested in. And my favorite thing about it is it lets you see stuff from sites you might never even know existed we st- uh, that are worthwhile. At Gamefly, we started a blog recently. Um, and uh, I need to see about how we get that included in Sifted. Yeah. Yeah. Let's yeah. do it. We'll talk after and, this. Uh, and I do a podcast with him every Thursday night. Yeah. What's the name of that podcast? It's called Game Face. And we talk about the, the news of the week, basically. It's it's long, two and a half, three hours sometimes. Ooh, that's good. Um, we, we don't know when to shut up. And um, <laughs> so you have to be a subscriber to Sifted for, uh, to, to wa- watch the archives. Okay. Uh, but you can watch it live when we actually do it. Uh, it's Thursday night, 7 p.m. Pacific on Twitch. On Twitch, right? On yeah. Sifted, Sifted Games on Twitch. And so you can watch it for free on Twitch when we do it live Thursday nights. If you want to watch back issues, you have to. Uh, back issues not the right term there, but I'm, no, a, com- but but I'm a comic I'm, nerd. No, so. no, it's so funny. I, I, yeah, I, I do that all the time. I talk about issues or, or if I'm talking about a comic, I'll talk about episodes. Mm. Um, but we get it. Yeah. We get it. That's all very fascinating. I want to talk a little Transformers with you. All right. Because you are a, you and um, your lady, mm-hmm. Elisa, are the biggest Transformers fans I've ever met. We're up there. You're way yeah. up there. She's actually, as we record this, she's at Transformers Con in Chicago. She or is. Or TFCon or whatever. TFCon, TFCon in Chicago, yeah. Um, and you, you love them. You love the Transformers. Mm-hmm. What, so where, where did that start? What, what was your first Transformer? My first Transformer was Soundwave. Soundwave, sweet. Uh, it was Chris, Christmas 1984. I got Soundwave uh, from Santa in the morning, and then I got Optimus Prime from my grandmother that afternoon. Oh, so those were the, Prime. those are the so first good. two. I still have them. Do those, you? Yeah, they're they're up on the shelf in places of honor. Awesome. Uh, all in all, they're floppy, mostly broken. <laughs> Did Soundwave come Glory. with Laserbeak and Ravage? Or, no, he or? came with uh, Buzzsaw. He came with Buzzsaw and uh, Laserbeak and Ravage. They were packaged together separately, they were, right? Uh, no, they were, were packaged. Uh, each Rumble? one was with a uh, different humanoid. So. Mm-hmm. I think it was Laserbeak and Frenzy and Rumble and Ravage. Yes, I think yeah. that, I think you're right. And Rumble and uh, Rumble and Frenzy were brothers, right? Uh, they, more or less. Was, yeah. Then they play with that a little. They bit? They would play with that. They, 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 the brother thing was a weird kind of after the fact thing because they're came robots, up, cause, but they're the yeah, same. Yeah, because that didn't make any sense. <laughs> yeah. But like, but you had like yeah, Frenzy and Rumble were kind of implied to have some kind of connection in that regard. Sideswipe and Sunstreaker were brothers. Yeah. Um, was it? D- didn't Bumblebee have a? No, there was nothing for Bumblebee. Although th- in Japan, because they did a red version of Bumblebee. Yeah, that was just a, a variant. They did that wasn't that no, wasn't a different guy. It entirely? wasn't a different guy. It was just it was uh, they did a red version of Bumblebee and a yellow version of Cliff Jumper. And the reason they did that was to make the line look bigger. Oh, because when when it was first starting, they didn't have as they wanted to have more as much product on the shelf as they could. Oh, that's great. There is a mistake version of uh of of Bumblebee and Cliff Jumper called Bumble Jumper, which is a different ah. mold that is uh extremely rare. Really? Uh which you'll only see uh in fact it was on um I believe it was on uh collection intervention. Oh, that guy had it? Yeah, one of that guy had that one and it was it was I mean Presumably they planned it. That was my it. episode. Was like, yeah, I think maybe. Yeah, yeah, because that yeah. was the episode of the Transformer guy. It was in that, yeah. For those of you uh, who probably don't know, which is probably everyone listening, <laughs> uh, I was on a show called Collection Intervention about four years ago now, uh, and it was uh, – it wasn't what they when I signed up for it. It wasn't what they told me it was no. going to be, but the 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 idea was they were supposed to be focusing and showcasing people with really great collections. Mine being comic books. Uh, this uh, the other gentleman that's on the show that was the other half of the episode. His was Transformers, and he had a great collection. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know, once you saw the airing and the final cut, it was uh, Joe's a hoarder. 
Yeah, and, and he lives and funny, in he lives in comic book squalor. Right, and the funny thing was, I I saw that episode before I knew you. Oh, did you? And because it was it was that fall, we were at uh, Thanksgiving. Oh yeah, right. Uh, right. I think the same Thanksgiving dinner in L.A. And at one point, someone mentioned it, or we mentioned it because Mike, like Elisa and I mentioned it because we were watching, still watching the show. And then, because I remember, I remembered that episode because it was comic books, and I love comic and, books and Transformers. And, Transformers, and yeah. I was like, and I was like, he, it was this whole thing about how like uh, your your girlfriend now wife was was all was like, oh, it's everywhere and it's all it doesn't make any sense and it's not organized. And, da, 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 da. and I was I remember looking at at the the B roll in that and just being like, it looks pretty organized to me. It really looks like he, it's all in one place. It's all in the long boxes. It's all alpha, it's all in numerical order. And I, I don't understand you're, what the problem you're is. You're in my living room right now, and I'm looking right at it. Is it, yeah. is it are it's we fine. In, it's it's delightful. Yeah, it's my, just it's just might as well be another shelf. Exactly. And so like <laughs> at some point it came up at the Thanksgiving thing, and and it, like I we realized you were you guys were the, the people from the show, yeah. and we're like, oh my god, was that any real? Because it, it looked like the collection was fine. Did you really trade like? What was it like? It, a bunch of Quasar for the first yeah, appearance of Quasar, Wolverine? Or yeah, something? Quasar and a bunch of detectives. Yeah, and I'm like, did you really do that? Because who the hell? Like, why would Golden Apple do that? And yeah. like, you know, it was, and it was like, all oh, it's all wrong. Yeah, totally. But like, uh, yeah, that was that was uh, that was the first time I met you. I think. Was, yeah. Was, I, uh, we I, suddenly realized that oh, yeah, these guys, and it was great because like of all the segments on that series, that was the one I had the most questions about because it seems so fishy. Well, it's so funny you say that because we weren't we weren't playing along. <laughs> we 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 were we were told when we signed up for it, we were told that it was going to be about featuring like actually featuring highlighting us as mm-hmm. highlighting me as a collector, and uh, and then like the night before we we go to shoot, we get told that oh they're going to ask you to sell a bunch of collection. I was like what? Like that's <laughs> I'm no that's no. not a thing I'm into, and and it went on from there. And then they they brought in an extra you know because my hundred and twenty long boxes weren't enough. They brought in an additional twenty. Wow. And I'm like, what are you doing? And they they, <laughs> they, they they make them up and they prop them in my living room. I go, well, you know, you can easily see there's a hole in the side. You can see they're all empty. <laughs> so they <laughs> so they realized that and they had to mock up they had to mock them up so they looked full, and they they just dressed our house. And I'm standing in the middle of my house. That's they're putting boxes everywhere. And I'm standing literally next to whoever the head was from Sci-Fi Channel, like the executive that was there. And 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 I just say out loud, whoever thought this was a good idea is really an idiot like, <laughs> there's no human would live like this and this is this is stupid and i'm just standing right next to the guy um and so we were so yeah so we didn't play along like we were kind of hostile like we mm-hmm. if we were on stand we'd be a hostile witness uh and they had to do uh adr stuff uh and green screen stuff we shot after we did that whole day of shooting so now the whole day is done so now we absolutely are cued in on what's mm-hmm. going on we also then knew what the name of the show was. We didn't know the show was called Collection Intervention mm. when we shot. We thought it was called Master Collector. So when we go to do the green screen, oh, we're on point. And they're, <laughs> they're saying to my wife, they're saying, uh, at the time, at the time, fiance, but they're saying to Rebecca, um, who you loyal Joe and Joe fans know, um, hey, could you please say this? Like, oh, his, his, uh, his collection's driving me crazy. And she looked right at the camera and go, no, I'm not going to say that. Because it's not. <laughs> They're like, please, would you? She goes, no. There's footage, Matt. There's footage out there of my wife flipping the bird to sci-fi executives <laughs> and saying, F you, sci-fi channel. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I think that came through in the show. <laughs> yeah, maybe it did. Maybe it did. Well, we're here to talk about G.I. Joe. Um, so you're a huge Transformers guy, mm-hmm. Optimus Prime and Soundwave. Uh, when did that? When did you cross over into GI Joe? When did when did well, you? GI from... Joe and Transformers always aired back to back, right? Uh, in syndication. So, um, you know, when I was a kid, I watched every cartoon I could. You know, same reason, I, same way I watched Robotech and Voltron and, oh, and man, Mask so and great. all that stuff. Did you see that Voltron that's coming out next summer? I did. It looks amazing. The the, the 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 statue. The the. Um, like the, there's a there's a super deluxe version that they're coming out with. I saw the one that like the, the like the three hundred dollar one. That's yeah. like it's like separates into the lions. Yes. and the lions can like sit down. Yes, like they're superposable. Yeah, I saw yeah. that. Yeah, and and they can turn into white lions, mm-hmm. and they do the whole Siegfried and Roy act. It's amazing. It's amazing. They maul one of the yeah, guys. Yeah, I love I love seeing Voltron come back. So you got a Voltron and Robotech was sweet. Oh yeah. But, uh, and Mighty Orbots. Nobody remembers Mighty Orbots. I do remember Mighty Orbots. That was 82. That was the first uh, Japanese-American co-production for an anime studio. Uh, and it was a, it was like Voltron. It was a combining set of yeah. robots that turned uh, joined together into a giant robot. 
Um, but look it up. Look, do me a favor, Mighty Orbots. Look it up on um, uh, YouTube. Look up the intro. Uh-huh. Uh, that first shot in that intro is one of my favorite shots in anything ever. Awesome. It's like this long tracking shot that kind of follows through like an asteroid and like along a ship and then like the giant robot suddenly pops into frame like over the giant ship and like you see how fast it's going because the bo- the ship is going past it like at a million miles an hour yeah, yeah. and like the, the use of like this the use of like relative objects to show the speed in space like I've always thought that was the coolest thing I'd ever seen and no one ever does that that's so cool uh, so like my, one of my dreams is to do a film involving space stuff that uses that similar shot from the beginning of Mighty Orbots to show how fast something's going yeah by not showing it by showing it against something else that's not moving that fast uh, and but keeping the space thing it's an amazing shot that I'm gonna look that up Lucas played with that in um. Uh, the Revenge of the Sith. Beginning of Revenge of the Revenge Sith. Revenge of the Sith. He played with the exact, the exactly well, what yeah. you're talking about. When I saw that, I was like, Mighty Orbot. This is Mighty Orbot. Like, you're going to give me my Mighty Orbot shot. And he doesn't, really. Yeah. He doesn't quite get there. But it's close. It's yeah. the closest thing I've ever seen. That and Battlestar Galactica, the the the, re- the reboot series. So good. Did uh, stuff like that. And I love that. Yeah, that's awesome. But, uh, uh, yeah. So, 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 so you would watch G.I. Joe? So I watched G.I. Joe. Either G.I. Joe was first, and I'd watch it to get to Transformers, or it was after Transformers, yeah. and I'd watch it because it was on anyway. You know, it's, yeah. it's, it's all the same thing. They're in the same universe. When they first crossed over, uh, like, you know, with the episode on Transformers with the old snake yeah. and stuff, did that blow your mind? Oh, yeah. Well, I already knew because uh, Marissa Fairborn uh, yeah. in the in the, the Five Faces of Darkness five-parter that takes place after Transformers, the movie, uh, is the daughter of Flint and Lady J, which I knew because Fairborn was Correct. Uh, Flint's real last name. She was, and, I didn't and have she, a lot she's of, voiced by Lady J. Yeah, yeah. And I didn't have a ton of... Um, like G.I. Joe toys and stuff, but I did read the comics, so uh, I did know all their real names mm-hmm. and all that kind of stuff. Did but you read the um, G.I. Joe Transformers crossover? Oh, yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah. That, was great. that was in continuity. It was. So it was. You it had was awesome. to, otherwise you wouldn't know why Bumblebee was suddenly Goldbug. Right, oh, right, right, right. Yeah. So good. Did so. you Now, did you read the... Um, I'm, well, I'm sure the answer to this is yes. I hope it's yes. <laughs> the um, the IDW crossover, or not IDW, the Devils Do crossovers that they did. I did, um, and a couple of the, like the one, the World War Two one is intense. amazing. Yeah, like, with Jai Lee art. Yeah, I, I love mean, it. I, lo- I love his stuff anyway. Yeah, going back to uh, the Extinction Agenda on yeah. X Factor, uh, where he does he does the absolute best uh, Apocalypse and uh, Archangel in that series. It's pretty good. Um, uh, his Inhumans series though with Paul Jenkins is oh, yeah. top notch. He does a good Black Bolt. That's true. Yeah. But he um, and Medusa, like the sh- his shading is good for Medusa. But yeah, he did. Um, it's it's this dark and weird and grimy and like it's basically like the like Cobra. Fi- if I remember right, it's like Cobra finds. No, that was another one. I don't remember the. That pl- was I don't remember one. the plot of it, but just the, the concept art was of, striking. Yeah, the concept of it's it takes place during G.I. Joe's a unit during World War Two, mm-hmm. and Cobra or the Transformers all take the take the shapes of World War Two era yeah. battle tanks. Yeah, and I'm, stuff. I'm mixing and I, it up with the, with another one where where Cobra finds them first. Did you read that one? Yes, yeah, Cobra yeah, finds yeah. them first, and they and they're all they all turn into Cobra vehicles. Mm-hmm. And eventually, the Autobots start like like Optimus Prime turns into a his tank, mm-hmm. and eventually, like the Autobots like good you know heroic personalities start like resisting the cobra brainwashing and they s- switch to gi joe's side but like you know like the the uh the, like all you know starscream and all those seekers turn into rattlers and like the, like the designs are amazing yeah. I, I would have bought toys of those just saying hasbro and technically if we're if we're talking continuity they all take place in the same marvel universe because spider-man crossed over in issue three of transformers marvel tried so hard to make people forget <laughs> that like there was a I, I i remember there was a letters column like deep into the into the u.s series like 30 40 issues in where someone mentioned that like the spider-man yeah. thing and they like and the marvel the editor was just like can we please forget about it number three like it i mean circuit yeah. breaker is also a, a an right. avengers villain she's a marvel That's character right death's head shows up mm-hmm. in the in the uk stories and and in some of the like he's he's in an incontinent he showed up he was showed up with iron man in the uh, a few years ago oh, yeah. Yeah, and yeah. when he was up in space with the guardians of the galaxy well and well i mean death's head had a ton of when there were marvel really was trying to get uk across there mm-hmm. was a ton of x-men crossovers and yeah and yeah um and then we also got with the currently IDW is doing that re- revolution where right. Hasbro is bringing all the properties yeah. together. So you've got ROM, which is now part of the Transformers universe and G.I. Joe universe. But back in the day, ROM also crossed over with 
right with, with Marvel. Marvel heroes every other oh, issue. Yeah. And Marvel still own Marvel owns all the stuff related to ROM except ROM. Yeah, except and, everything that's on the toy and package. Space Knight everything stuff. that's on the package for yeah, ROM. But they own like the Dire Wraiths. And they own all the that design stuff. of the Dire Wraiths. They don't own the name. They don't own the name. This is the name because the name was printed on the package. Mm. So uh, and this was actually this is from uh, Chris Gage, the writer. Hmm. He was explaining this to me at Golden Apple one day. Uh, they can use the name Dire Race, but they, they can't look anything like right. the Marvel version. And they can't like act like the Marvel version. <laughs> so the Marvel version has these slug-like Dire Wraiths, and Rom has um, their, their little more... I don't know. Would you, have you seen them yet? Mm, I, I, saw a th- I thought they looked a little more insectoid Yeah, maybe? they're a little insectoid. They, like take, they, 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 take, they remind me of the Brood a yeah, little bit, they, actually. Yeah, they do take the shape of people. And uh, in one of, the, uh, one of the early issues... It's revealed that General Joe Colton, the the mm. titular G. Joe. titular yeah. GI Joe, uh, was a dire wraith. What? Yeah, Rom shows up and just uses his, uh, his neutralizer. Oh, and he just blasts him to smithereens. So then Rom's wanted for killing GI Joe. Oh, yeah. that's that's some that's some life it's model some decoy s- Nick second Fury level stuff, stuff there. So well, let's get into it. It's time we got into Bazooka Saw Sea Serpent. Uh, <laughs> did you uh, do you know Bazooka? Uh, I know he's the dumb one. He's the dummy uh, before shipwreck showed up. Yeah, uh, shipwreck in all, shipwreck's guess. not as dumb as bazooka. No, shipwreck is shipwreck. Shipwreck. Shipwreck's ca- shipwreck's a con artist. Sort of shipwreck. Bazooka's kind of, mentally deficient. Bazooka I, might be on might, the like on the spectrum. Spectrum somewhere. way on the spectrum. Like, now, I, I guess like shipwreck is really oddly shipwreck is kind of more the star scream. Like he's arrogant. Very he thinks so. he should be in command. Yeah. He sucks when he does get command. Mm-hmm. Like he's just not yeah. evil. He's star screaming with a heart of gold. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, totally. All right, so let's get into it. Matt, again, uh our our fans can find you at, at Matt Kyle, M K E I L. And yep. you can find me at Joe and Joe Pod. That's on Instagram and Facebook and Send me a Gmail, joeandjoepod at gmail.com. If you want to be a guest on the show, I'll be happy to have you on. And uh, here we go with Bazooka Saw a Sea Serpent. So, Joe opening is iconic. We all know this. Um, I love the Transformers opening, too. Yeah. And the Transformers commercial bumpers were so good. Oh, yeah. You know, like you the know, best animated thing in the, in in the, the whole show, show yeah. <laughs> Where... Uh, there were a couple different ones. It's not like they use the same one every time. Mm-hmm. With G.I. Joe, whenever you go to a commercial, it's always the same. G.I. Joe will be back you know, with the logo and everything. But the Transformer bumpers were different Transformers coming yeah. out and transforming for you. And it was like a crapshoot which Transformer you're going to get each commercial. Yeah, and they always updated it as things went on. You know, as mm-hmm. the show went on to like incorporate the ones they were trying to sell yeah. at the time. Very much so. Uh, it was always very exciting when you got Omega Supreme. Mm-hmm. And, mm-hmm. You know, and not like the Laserbeak for the 50th time. Right. Uh, although my favorite was Jazz. Jazz does that cool spin out and then transforms in the middle of it and then like shoots all around him. Yeah, like, yeah, 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 yeah. That was the and best wasn't one. Jazz, uh, wasn't Jazz Scatman Crothers? Yes. Yes. He was. Uh, he of his shining fame. Yes. And so, actually, if you... If you uh, oh, ooh, Bazooka Saw Sea Serpent, written by Mary Skrens. Hmm. She's written comics. And off the top of my head, I can't place it, but I think I want to say she wrote some amethyst oh yeah maybe hmm. but i know that name so they're fishing yeah uh the the guys it's bazooka it's alpine they're on uh they're on the hovercraft the killer for the, some the, reason the whale and there's it's my cutter. guy cutter i yeah. love cutter he's he's just like wild bill whenever he shows up things get better yeah i remember i did like bazooka because he has the 14 and that's mm-hmm. my birthday oh the 14th so nice. i liked him so they're on they're on vacation they're taking a little r and r man do you always get to take one of the military vehicles on R and R in the real military? Is that a thing? I, I feel like there's a lot of requisition questions about there this organization. There should be. I do think that um, I think Cutter's argument is: listen, if you're going to seal me up and wrap me in plastic and sell me with this thing, I could take it wherever I want. <laughs> if he uh, just threw that in the ocean, well, wasn't it just a? a f- there was a cup dead too. Fish? Was there a cup? There was he a just cup. littered. I think there was a cup. So Bazooka there went go, to do just some, drop the whole thing. Yeah, Bazooka went to do some dishes and he sees. What we know is a Cobra Trouble Bubble and a giant sea serpent leaps out of the ocean and eats the Trouble Bubble. Which none of these other two guys four feet away from him heard or saw. Nope. Nope. Didn't see it at all. It's okay, Bazooka. You're it's tired. interesting there's so many bubblegum references. I guess that's the Bazooka thing. Bazooka gum. Yeah, I think so. Like, yeah. Because he's always blowing bubbles. And yep. Always blowing bubbles. Always. Yeah, yeah. I, I really like how the, the writers on this show... 
uh, all the Sunbow stuff, but especially this one, like just what is the name? All right, take that, and that becomes their personality. Mm-hmm. And like, you know, you see it with Ace and all the card game references. You see, well, that's that's a that's a writing tool that oh, yeah. absolutely is. Writers do that for for major movies. When when um, if, you you'll read about people teaching classes when you're trying to think of a name for a character. Like you write, say you're writing a screenplay, and you're like, he's um, you know, he's he's strong and he's uh, uh, forthright, and uh, so but I need a name for him. And literally, they say, call him like. John Proudstrong, or you know, like like something along those. Rick McRun's fast. Yeah, like yes. something literally something <laughs> like that. And uh, if you pay attention to a lot of movies, a lot of times when you see the full names of people, you they will match with their mm. personalities because it it both helps sub subliminally, subconsciously, it helps the listener to right. identify that character that I'm watching is that type of personality. And then as the writer, it helps you keep you on point as you're as you're putting I together what to they're saying. Off. Don't let anyone mess with the whale till I get back. So the whale and the guys are uh, they just rescued a family. A shipwreck. I like to think that family was on their way to Is- Isla you nu- Nublar. <laughs> Isla Isla Jimmy? Nublar. Yes, sir. Uh, Tell <laughs> us from Jurassic you Park. Remember? Well, we were all asleep in our bunks this when Duke's got the, the dainty barking. pinky when he uh, Duke, comforts a boy. Duke does I have see. a dainty pinky. He's got a, <laughs> he's got a Penn State pinky. Uh, so this kid's recounting the story of how basically his family was in a shipwreck. We saw something glowing down They're in the They're telling about they saw this, this huge, glowing huge eyes, and there's this giant shadow cuts boat. underneath their boat. And then, Did they rescue the dog, by the way? I hope they did. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. And then this and uh, the monster the eats this boat. And we didn't even see what it was. Always cling to the propellers when you're in a, the in a safe, boat crash. The safest part. Hey, it helped the people on the Long Titanic, right? Tough. All right. Thanks, Jimmy. You're the best eyewitness also, we've I'm pretty had so sure far. Duke's insignia is on the wrong side. Oh. Interesting. I mean, maybe that's his character model, but like usually the ins- your airborne insignia is on He's your, uh, your on left side. side. Yeah, I, that's his character model, so I wonder if they, yeah. Uh, Interesting. But he can't put that on that side because he's got that he's random got strap yeah. that doesn't... So, I would, I, I'd like to know the, the intricacies of how you like get your uniform cleared in G.I. Joe. Like Some people are wearing like actual military fatigues, but here's quick, quick kicks. Quick, quick kicks like, I never want to wear a, a shirt, ever. Or shoes. Like, ever. Or shoes. Like, I, don't care, I don't care if we go to the, the Arctic. Like I'm not wearing a shirt. No. Hey, they found him in the Arctic with no shirt. <laughs> That's how they met him. So why should I wear a shirt or shoes? Like, at what point do I do this? Or like, I mean, Bazooka could just be a dude. Mm-hmm. Off the, or uh, what's his name? Chuckles. Oh, Ch- well, Chuckles, you know, he's modeled after Don Johnson. Oh, is that? You know, that, that yeah, is? yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. Chuckles literally was supposed to be, they were going after the Miami Vice heat, mm. and so they made Chuckles. Uh, Chuckles got a great arc in a, a book called G.I. Joe called Cobra. It was like one mm. of the first G- books to, to just literally focus on Cobra. And Chuckles goes undercover into Cobra. And I'll just say he doesn't make it out alive. Mm. And it's amazing, though, because you really see all the levels of deep. Because that's what he was. He was the undercover, undercover like, guy, spy yeah. guy. You see all the stuff that he goes into. And at the end of the series that you've just watched Chuckles go through all six issues, he dies. Hmm. Yeah. But his his legacy c- carries on. Like the characters that he worked with show up in all the rest of the episodes. And it's like his, his spirit. It's great. They really made a great character out of Chuckles. Hmm. A Hawaiian shirt wearing buffoon. Also, I'm just saying... Not wearing a shirt, let alone not wearing a helmet, both of you. Yeah. But not wearing a shirt in a supersonic jet fighter mm-hmm. is not going to be good for your health. No. And they also just landed the Sky Striker on a sand beach. Yeah. In front of ship. Like, if you overshot that, you just killed Shipwreck and that random woman he was hanging with. Right. And how are they going to take off again? Well, they'll just like, turn around. I guess. But I don't. Yeah, I don't. I like to think maybe every Sky Striker is secretly a VTOL. <laughs> it just shoots straight up in the air. So, uh, so shipwreck beat him there, and then they, they said that they're uh, one of the natives there. saw something on the other side of the island. So, so it's quick kick and Lady yeah, J and shipwreck. One of the natives that shipwreck instantly enslaved. Apparently, oh. <laughs> listen, you, what you call enslaving, I call seduction. <laughs> Who can resist shipwreck? Not he didn't me. Even not this say guy. Goodbye. Not this guy. 
so they swim out. There's a yacht that's kind of moored out uh, into the, yeah. the cove or with the bay. a pirate flag <laughs> yeah, flying. It does have a pirate the, flag? It's very good subtle. Eye. The major yeah. shipping companies have At least it, to your it is subtle because it could have been a cobra <laughs> flag because literally cobras on <laughs> yeah, board. Yeah, So I guess they could have been flying a cobra flag. It's undercover no. for cobra. Yeah, that's very right discreet. Cobra commander's like upset with the Crimson Twins. There's also a, an interesting uh, side note on Cobra that um, in the end, if you, especially if you read the Larry Hama comic books, uh, they are more successful than Hydra, which is what they're basically... They're, they're basically oh, yeah. a, a ripoff of Hydra because mm-hmm. Marvel created the, right. the G.I. Joe mythos. Um, they do better than Hydra on a regular basis. They really do. They control entire towns in the United States. Yeah. Like, Le- like Cobra Commander got, like, elected... Mayor, yes, like like legit, yeah, like he like he they they I mean terrorism run, through democracy. It's very they, impressive. I mean the the creation of Cobra Island in and of itself is a stroke of genius. Yeah, they they drop enough dynamite to simulate a nuclear weapon, and we go to commercial with a giant sea serpent rising out of the ocean, G.I. about Joe to eat his yacht. Oh. Today's file card feature is on the Cobra CEO, Chief of Environmental Operations, code name Cesspool. Cesspool's file name is Vincent A. Dallavia, and his birthplace is Newton, Massachusetts. Now, Cesspool's primary military specialty is chemical weapons, and he has special training in advanced extortion, racketeering, hazardous waste assault training, and his current assignment is part of the Echo Warriors group of Cobra soldiers. Again, current as of the 1991 Hasbro Impel cards. Who knows what he's doing now? He's probably vying for a spot as head of EPA under Trump's regime. Cesspool was the chief executive officer of a huge multinational corporation with vast holdings in oil refineries, chemical plants, and mills. In an effort to placate environmental groups that were constantly assaulting him about toxic waste spewing from his operations, he took them on a tour through one of his chemical plants to prove his operations were environmentally sound. While demonstrating the efficiency of a toxic waste containment area outside the plant, the scaffolding collapsed and he fell into the sludge below. The accident left him horribly disfigured. More ruthless and despicable than before, Cesspool is convinced that environmentalists were responsible for his accident and is determined to make the world as ugly as nasty as he is. Armed with an acid-assisting chainsaw, he's taken his knowledge of high-level dirty dealings and corporate subterfuge straight to the organization that will make the best use of him, Cobra. They say that if you're out in the field and headquarter radios that your credit rating just went belly up, you can be sure this man had something to do with it. Cesspool definitely teetered on the cheesier side of the Cobra troops. However, his outfit's kind of kind of cool in a very gaudy way. He's got like gold-plated arms, a big Cobra on his chest, a green and purple outfit. The scarring on his face is quite hideous as well. So, Vincent A. DeLevia, you climate change denier, we salute you. The creation of Cobra Island is a stroke of brilliance. They dropped a bunch of TNT in the ocean to simulate the effect of a couple nuclear bombs without the fallout. (laughs) The G.I. Joes find out too late. The explosions go off. This huge chunk of landmass rises out of the ocean. It's basically the plot to Superman Returns. Mm -hmm. And Cobra immediately is there. The Crimson Twins are there with their lawyers in New York. Cobra's there. They plant a flag on it. The twins are in New York, and, and they immediately petition the UN that this is a sovereign nation. It's outside the three mile limit from any any US um, mm-hmm. any US land, and all of a sudden they're the sovereign owners of this yeah. new land. Like it's basically sea land. Yeah, it's like that. It's yeah. the, like that's really kind of happened it's, in a couple places. It's totally. It's brilliant. It's a brilliant plan, and that's where they then lived for years. So what we are seeing is this giant sea serpent is eating boats. It has captured a bunch of cobras, soldiers, as well as Cobra Commander. The suspender, really funny. The suspenders are really working for, for the Vipers. Yeah, there. they really help. One of the Vipers said he was no, that he wasn't going to help, and he got sucked away. You bet your life, doll. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Now, what impersonation was that? Uh, I think that's supposed to be Bogey? Groucho Marx. Gra- was that Groucho? Uh, you bet your life was the game show he hosted. Oh, yes. Good call. It also sounded a little bit like Short Round. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think Quick Kick would do that one. Yeah. Uh, oh, good. The dog's alive. Oh, yeah. Somehow. Oh, I guess because the sea serpent ate him. Yeah. So the sea 
and, and Lady J met this um is basically is this a guy coop. supposed to be Steven Spielberg? Uh, that's a good question, and maybe he's a little bit of a kook. He's obsessed with like like a fake underwater monster. Um, that's a good point. He's, a little bit like Do- like like Captain Nemo meets Steven. So he looks like Steven yeah. Spielberg. He's got the he's got the baseball he's got the hat baseball on, cap got and the, the beard, and the, and, the beard and the shorts and the the shirt. Um, I think you just stumbled onto it. That's Steven Spielberg. Okay, we're gonna call him Steven Spielberg from now on, <laughs> or perhaps he's his Mexican knockoff, <laughs> Steven Spielberg. <laughs> you must never be stopping the work. Only, only during coffee break. Oh, the coffee break! <laughs> Your foul greed has enslaved you at last. <laughs> so Commander this Warden. guy's plan well, is, is to eat coffee. boats, and the people that he rescues or captures, rather. He uses them to sift through the wreckage and to find gold for him. But his creature's gotten out of control. Would you say that that's an accurate bit, description? Yeah. Unforeseen consequences, at yeah. the very least. Um, it's fascinating because it's like, what I you know, it's sad because you'd you'd hope you'd be more interested in more important historical events. But one of the things I'd do if I had a time machine is I'd go back and want to sneak my way into the writers' room of the Sunbow <laughs> offices around this because I want to know. What? Yeah. I mean, to be fair, if you ask Flint Dilly about it, he'll tell you all the stories you ever need to hear. But like, well, th- this is this is really this is their version of Godzilla. Yeah, they're doing a Godzilla movie. That's what they're doing with this, and I think I think that's great. Which I think lends more credence to the Steven Spielberg interpretation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're totally right. Yeah, it's Jaws. It's Jaws and Godzilla. Once again, Wild Bill. Wow, he just... He doesn't care. No, he does not care. He's happy. And that hat's not coming off. That hat's never coming off, man. It comes <laughs> off for two things. Deep Six shows up. Uh, did you uh, Did you have a lot of Joe toys when you were a kid? I didn't have a ton. I had some figures. Um, Do you remember which ones? I had uh, all the Vipers. I oh, love really? the Vi- and Especially when they, like, later on when they started making all the different variants. Mm-hmm. So I had the Alley Viper and the Night Viper and the Toxo Viper and the Star Viper and the like all that stuff. Really? I had all the ninja stuff. I liked all the Storm Shadow and Snake Eyes stuff. I had, I only had Did Vi- you have Ninja Force? I did have Ninja you Force. Did. Yes, I had all that cuz cuz Storm Shadow and to like bang. The, in, oh yeah, Storm Shadow with the with the hood and that was the, a all good that stuff. Look. Those were good stuff. That was a good look. And um uh for vehicles I only had I had uh, the X-Wing like the the cross oh, the, the cross yeah, fire the X-30. thing. X thirty, yeah. X thirty, Conquest X thirty. No, no, no. It was, um, it was not because the Conquest X thirty had the, the, the forward, swept forward, wing, forward, forward yeah. Wing. This was, um, it was a GI Joe vehicle, and it was like you could push the thing down, and blades would come out, oh, and be a helicopter. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And he yeah, pulled it yeah, up and right. became a jet. Right, 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 right. Uh, I had the star, the the stiletto, that oh, like is that from the Star Brigade? Uh, it might have been. I think it was before that, but okay. it was it was like this. It was a Cobra starship, and it was like this long, sleek thing. That's awesome. I had the Mamba. Mambo was um, cool, which is awesome, and I had the uh, the GI Joe Phantom X nineteen, nice, um, which was awesome because it uh, it was a stealth fighter, and it also like it dropped like torpedoes or well, something. Well, wasn't was that wasn't that the reskin of the Cobra Night Raven? No, the Night Raven was an SR seventy one. The X nineteen, which is what I want. I actually wanted the Night Raven, but it, they didn't make it anymore. Oh, I so, had the Night Raven, that so, was so I had cool. to get the Phantom X nineteen, which was it was like it was like shaped almost like a teardrop. Oh, I do know what you're talking. About. Yes, yeah. that might have been part of Battle Force two thousand. It was not, not yet. It wasn't. No. Okay, all right. It was. Uh, I didn't have any of that. I didn't have I any do, Battle Force two thousand. I, I, I didn't totally have, know what you're um, talking about because I can picture. I didn't it from have Tiger the Force. Books. I didn't have. I love. I didn't have Python Patrol. I did like the Python <laughs> Patrol reskins. I had. Um, uh, they did the um like the before they did actual branded python patrols they did a, a like a the first one they did was called um like operation jungle tiger or something right. and right. it was so it wasn't branded tiger force but there was all the characters in different outfits mm-hmm. and uh i had them all it was so cool like uh, it was it was like the first variant is basically yeah. what they were yeah it was where they started to, like transformers was doing a similar thing at the time where they're like oh we can just like repaint these things mm-hmm. With a di- you know with a little minor yeah. change and, and resell we can them do it. Yeah, yeah it makes total sense so um, the serpent is now attacking New York City the serpent has gotten out of control from yeah this its is really wishes. expanded beyond the plan that Steven Spielberg yeah. originally had for it and Duke is just about to throw a missile down the serpent's throat as we go to commercial after these messages. They'll fight for freedom wherever there's trouble. GI Joe is there. GI Joe. Oh, attacking. We're outnumbered. GI Joe to the rescue. 
the G.I. Joe personnel carrier holds 28 members of the G.I. Joe team. Let's go! Go get the new members of the G.I. Joe team. Here's Torpedo and Tripwire. Get the Joe team aboard and move them out. G.I. Joe! The G.I. Joe personnel carrier holds 28 Joe team members, each sold separately from Hasbro. Now, back to G.I. Joe. I did enjoy in the previous scene they included this Statue of Liberty to give you scale right. as to exactly how big the serpent is. And the serpent's huge. Mm -hmm. Which but later Cobra would attempt to destroy the actual Statue of Liberty. Did you see the, 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 the turn that that Skystriker made? <laughs> it Duke, was, is a, Duke is an excellent pilot. Duke is amazing, with or without a helmet. Uh, but he shot some missiles down his throat and it did not work well. No, the Joes got all their, they got their, um, their Mobats and they're firing tanks, tank shells at this thing, and it's doing nothing. So it is impervious. It's now also, like Godzilla, it's firing heat rays from its eyes, although Godzilla does it from his uh, mouth. I get it, but you know and what he, I mean? Uh, it, it, it's as big as the shot needs it to be, mm -hmm. really. That is true. And once again, the it is totally willingness of G.I. Joe soldiers to abandon their vehicles at the first <laughs> sense of sign of danger, because we now, can't kill anybody. To his credit, Steven Spielberg is trying to stop this thing. He doesn't want it to run roughshod and kill everybody. However, this I would why say, why did switch. you build this in the first place? Well, yeah. It seems like maybe you could just build like a big ship. I feel like there's a world where, the door. where this Steven Spielberg gets together with the games master and they make this amazing wonderland of <laughs> animatronic robot adventures and then they team up with arcade and they team up with arcade exactly where well, they have a love child bazooka love holding arcade. the bazooka backwards there. he really was yeah he really was holding it backwards like someone was drawing ba like that someone's is. drawing based on an actual rpg launcher but uh -huh. they think the back end is where the bullet correct. comes. correct correct and the way he was pointing it the exhaust would have gone right in alpine's face right but alpine's wearing those goggles that so is he the goggles been okay. those goggles help um the underside of the whale looks authentic to what the toy yeah, other side looked like. Does. That was pretty cool. Okay, we now have Alpine without any of his uh, helmet or his mask on, and it's funny, you don't often see that. No. So Bazooka is uh, holding on to the serpent. He's got his bazooka. Yeah, which bazooka's is, hat's off, too. That's, yeah, and which, a... which is a very rare sight, too. He's he's just... he. Oh, he tricks the serpent to bite itself like an Ouroboros, right? Very nice. Ouroboros? Yep. Ouroboros, or whatever, Ouroboros, whatever yeah. To say it. So the serpent's eating its own tail. Ironic that the dumbest GI Joe right? figured that one out. Totally. I do like that they that they that they kept him in the mix on this. He's the guy that first saw it, and then he gets to be you know one yeah. of the heroes at the end of it. Man, that's a lot of hair under it's Alpine's hat. So much hat. hair. So much hair. Like they're almost brothers there. Look at that. Maybe that's why they get along so well. Yeah, maybe. Uh, some. Firebats just f just deposited some cobra eels to go underwater and kind of like commandeer this uh, out of control uh, serpent. Now, this cobra commander is still held in the belly of it, as is Lady J. This dog Bucky's going to save Lady J. Fire on an underwater vehicle has got to be frightening. Oh yeah, fire is the sailor's greatest enemy. Exactly right. Steven Spielberg. Broken his leg. He can't get out. Lady J is strong. Lady J throws him over his shoulder. Lady J has no time for this. Somebody's been working out. And yet, in uh, in the Viper episode, she was winded after going upstairs. The, the Joe's levels of fitness are what's up and down as the plot demands. Well, do you know really. why? Because they haven't yet introduced Sergeant Slaughter. True. So their fitness True. regimen is not on point. It's not where it needs to be. No. Not at all. They're basically just like doing whatever Roadblock tells them to do, and then he feeds them gumbo and does, does all the mm -hmm. work. So. Mm -hmm. Cobra Commander is, is, is making his way out. I don't know where Quick Kick's at, but I love it. He sends the, uh, the Cobra Trooper to go first because he figures there's some traps somewhere. Uh Makes sense. Yeah, it does. The eels, they're hooking uh, some uh, wires up to the jaw to kind of pry open this serpent. And here comes Deep Six and his shark. I wonder if we're going to see I wonder if we're gonna see Torpedo. They haven't introduced Wetsuit yet, so we shouldn't see Wetsuit. But I wonder if we're going to get a little Torpedo action. <laughs> Bucky is very on point. What's in there, Professor? I wish my dogs were as sharp the as Bucky. You heard me. 
Shirley Feeney. She's really making carrying a grown man look effortless here. Totally. She's carrying him like a child. Like a, yeah, like cradling him under the butt kind yeah. of thing. So Cobra Commander is uh, hes in what Spielberg referred to as the ejection chamber, but Cobra work? Commander can't Will figure out how to make work? it work. Will you work? Will you work? Oh! You reptilian I want to say Cobra Commander is allergic to hard work. Probably. He's he wants a lot of people to do that. He's that he's, he's an office guy. Yeah, he's, he's the a, he's the quote idea man. Yeah, well, even even you find out later in the movie that he was a, he's a scientist, but he's a he's a desk. He's a lab. Right. Guy. He's a lab. Yeah, he's a lab rat. Uh, so because they refuse to work, a bunch of security tendrils. And here's Quick Kick singing Barbara Quick Seville. Kick. Yeah, if Quick Kick's not doing an impersonation of of uh, Alfred Hitchcock, he's singing Barbara Seville. And Quick Kick can carry Steven Spielberg now. Yeah. Lady J's had enough. So the Joes, uh, the Joes are fighting with these eels underwater. Cobra Commander gets shot out of a basically a torpedo tube, and uh, so the eels break off because they were just there to rescue Cobra Commander. I don't know what happened to that other Cobra soldier. Nobody cares. Nobody cares. For once, we actually may have our first actual fatality on the show. Well, he's probably just in there somewhere. Yeah, because the other the other yeah, sailors are in there too. Now, yeah. So. Oh yeah, you're right. Well, let's see if he's with this group of dudes. <laughs> So the dog yeah, because they usually are very good about showing they're, everybody. They're on point with it. Like yeah. they go out of their way to show people crawling out of wreckage. And, okay, there's a whole bunch of whole bunch of other people coming out. I don't see that Cobra Trooper. <laughs> you're going to jail, buddy. <laughs> you, you're going to jail for a long time. Yeah, Duke would probably in real life. Duke would probably just pull the pistol and yeah. that would be the end. Of yeah, that. yeah. Here's this is for what you did to, to Queens. Hooray, let's hey. all take a picture with a guy that almost destroyed yeah, New York. that's kind of frightening. Um, Bazooka Saucy, Silver Man, Kyle. Yeah. That's it. That's you dig like, it? I dig it. It's interesting that they titled it that when it's really not that much of the crux of the yeah. story. Like they, they settled that there is an actual sea serpent fairly early on. Right, 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 right. It could have been like, how about like like destroy, what if they called it like destroy all sea serpents? Yeah. That would or have been fun. Yeah, like uh, G.I. Joe versus the sea serpent. Good. Yeah, yeah. I do I do love that it's uh, 100% a Godzilla oh, yeah. versus G.I. Joe episode. And they, they go there with Steven Spielberg stuff and Jaws. And I, I think that's of Mecha Serpent or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You could have done something with I that. I think that's dynamite, man. Well, I, feel, a, I feel like that episode. title is probably just like how some writer was like referring to it yeah, in yeah, like yeah. memos. And they yeah. just, it just never got changed. <laughs> well, Matt, thank you so much for being a guest, man. I appreciate it. Sure, anytime. This was so much fun. We're going to have you back. Remember, you can find Matt at Matt Kyle, M-K-E-I-L on Twitter. Uh, remember to make sure you check out sifted.net, S-I-F-T-D.net. And uh, now you, Joe, and Joeing is half the battle. <laughs>